your emergency broadcast system, announcing the commencement of the annual purge. At the siren, all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 hours. All emergency services will be suspended. Your government thanks you for your participation. What is this? Hello everybody, how you doing? So, this last weekend I decided to check out The Purge Anarchy, mainly because it appeared to be the least shit movie that was released this last weekend. Um, yeah, look, looking at the Rotten Tomato scores, everything was rotten that came out. Everything is rotten! Uh, someone needs to make that parody. Someone. Internet, go. Get on that. But yeah, so I was... Kind of curious how The Purge Anarchy would turn out, because I never saw The Purge when it was in theaters, but uh, to prepare myself for the sequel, I gave it a rental, mainly because I wanted to see why The Purge warranted a sequel, because judging by the trailer and the critical reaction, it looked really stupid. And it doesn't get any less dumb once you actually see the movie. If you followed my Twitter, you know that, that as soon as I saw the movie, I'm like... I'm still wondering why this warranted a sequel. This was bad. This was really, really bad. Uh, the, the basic premise behind this movie is once a year on the 21st of March, which is on or about the first day of spring, a fact that I don't think they ever actually mention in the movie in one of its rare moments of subtlety, uh, the only one, uh, um, for 12 hours, from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., all crime is legal, including murder. And all emergency services are suspended. So go out there and blow off some steam in any way you please. And the reasoning behind this is it helps people's psychological well-being, the people who survive anyway. Yeah, I'm sure it does. <laughs> Yes, because the people who are going around killing random people are look so psychologically well-adjusted. Oh yes, of course they do. And also it helps lower the poverty and unemployment levels, which that part actually makes sense because most of the people getting killed off are the poor people. So yeah, of course that's going to cut unemployment. Uh, it's a very messy way to do it, but yeah, that at least that's one of the few parts of the movie that kind of makes sense. Um... And there are some restrictions in The Purge. Um, you're only allowed to use weapons class 4 and below, which, from what I gather, basically means no explosives. Uh, flamethrowers are okay, though, apparently. There's, there's, a, there's a scene in The Purge Anarchy where someone's walking around with a flamethrower. Uh, it's only a very brief scene, though. You don't see enough flamethrowers. There should have been more. That movie needed more flamethrowers, definitely. But anyway... Uh, uh, oh, and also, government officials are off-limits. Yes, don't go after the government officials, yeah. Which is ridiculous, because you know that's the first people that they're going to go after. It doesn't matter if you tell them, now don't you go shooting the president. No, 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 no. The president is fucking toast. If you're giving everyone assault weapons and flamethrowers and machetes and baseball bats and all this other shit, and telling them to go out and start killing, they coming for you. They coming for everybody on Capitol Hill. You all gonna die. I don't care how good your security is. It's going to be everyone else against you. You are going to die. You're going to be the first against the wall when the revolution comes. E even if the government did try to do the purge, it would only happen once. That's all it would take. So, yeah. The, and the first movie, it's, the plot is very, very thin. It's a home invasion movie. That's all it really is. And it's not very well done for a home invasion movie. It's the... It's the, really a stupid story. The dialogue is not very good, and the, the acting is okay, I suppose. That's really the only thing it has going for it. And the twist at the end, if you can call it that, it's, yeah, it's telegraphed a mile away. It's not a very good movie, and I don't recommend it at all. The Purge Anarchy is better, for what it's worth. Uh, which surprised me because it's written and directed by the same guy. But, yeah, apparently he's getting better, so I'll give him that much. Uh, 
Yeah, the second movie is not a home invasion movie. It's actually more of a survival story. Basically, it's five people who end up stranded in the middle of downtown Los Angeles on purge night and have to survive until 7 a.m. There's a, a young married couple who are apparently on the verge of getting a separation. Not that it matters in the incredibly thin plot, but it is what it is. And the other two are a mother and daughter who were hoping to just board themselves up for the night, but their apartment complex was raided by some guys that were rather heavily armed and decked out in body armor and driving a semi-truck with a guy with a fucking minigun in the back. <laughs> Which... Yeah, the, there, there is no subtlety in any of these movies. There's a scene near the beginning when this semi shows up and there's these two people just walking across the street wearing... Mass. I, that's another thing about these movies I don't get. Why do people wear masks? If what you're doing is legal, why do you need to hide your face? You can't be prosecuted for any of this shit. You're, you're doing everything within the context of the law. Why the masks? Makes no goddamn sense. It didn't make sense in the first movie. It doesn't make sense here. Why the fuck are they... Anyway, so they're, they're strolling down the street with their machetes and their masks, skipping along, and then this big semi-truck stops, the door opens up, and there's a guy there with a fucking 50 cal gun just ready and waiting just to turn these guys into salsa, and he does, which really is unnecessary because a couple of well-placed rifle shots would have taken these guys out. I don't, I mean, I, I don't remember exactly, but I don't think they had guns on them. I think they just had uh, machetes, and that was it, but doesn't matter. He has to be as over-the-top as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Must have emptied several hundred rounds just into these two people. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's no subtlety in these movies. That was another rule of the purge. All, all subtlety has been suspended until 7 a.m. Thank you. Uh, yes, subtlety has been purged from these movies. So, yeah, there's the mother and daughter. There's the, the, uh, the young couple that's having marital problems whatever. And then there's Frank Grillo, who is really the star of this movie. And if there's any reason to see this movie at all, it is him. Because amidst what is admittedly a very dumb premise and an extremely thin plot, he somehow makes it work. Because he is really just that good in this movie. Um, he's playing a guy who is the one member of this group that is actually voluntarily part of the purge. Uh, he's not out there just to kill random people. He's actually there for a very specific reason. His son was killed by a drunk driver and the guy got off on a technicality. So on this one night out of the year when murder is legal, he's going to enact some vigilante justice and get revenge for his son. The movie is pretty predictable for the most part. So I'm sure I don't have to tell you how that ends. You can guess, but you know, he plays it well, to be fair. He really does. As I said, no subtlety in this movie at all. It's, they, they, they make no secret that the only reason for this purge is to basically kill all the poor people and the colored folk. It re oh yes, these, this, a lot of the people that are behind the purge are the richest, whitest motherfuckers that you can possibly imagine. Just imagine the wealthiest, whitiest, one percentiest <laughs> of all, everyone, and that's exactly who these people are. There's a scene where, uh, these, uh, where these rich white 1% motherfuckers are actually buying up poor people that they can use as their own personal purge victims. And basically, kind that there's even a scene later on in the movie where they reenact their own version of the most dangerous game, essentially, by, you know, auctioning off people that they've captured to these rich guys so they can just, you know, hunt them down in this own little maze they've built in the backyard of this place and just blow them away. Yeah, no subtlety <laughs> at all. Absolutely not. But, you know, there's really not much more to say about the, the story of this movie. That's really all there is. Uh, I mean, even if I got into spoilers... But like I said, this once this movie starts going, it's pretty predictable for the most part. But, you know, for what it's worth, I didn't hate it. I mean, the first movie, I... Oh. 
God, no, that was terrible. But, you know, I didn't walk out of the theater angry for... And now, maybe part of that was that I saw the first movie beforehand to prepare myself, so I knew going in that it was going to be stupid. I knew how dumb this premise was, so maybe that just kind of tricked my brain into accepting it. That That's entirely possible. You know, maybe that just put me in the right frame of mind. Like, look, I know this is going to be dumb. Just accept the dumb and try to find a silver lining in here. And, and I did. And that silver lining is called Frank Grillo. <laughs> it's been, seriously, he is really, I can see why so many people are praising his performance in this movie. He really is that good. So, yeah, I, it was, for what it's worth, as a B movie, it, it wasn't god awful. It really wasn't. It was okay. I was, that there were parts of it that were just dumb, but there were other parts that were entertaining enough to at least keep me going throughout the entire runtime. Uh, whether I would recommend it, maybe as a rental when it hits VOD or DVD. Uh, I don't know that I'd recommend seeing it in theaters unless you just have this really powerful urge to see it on the big screen. And even then, I would not pay full price. See it at matinee. But I think it's better to just wait for a rental for this one. But yeah, I mean, if, if you're the kind of person that can enjoy a good B-movie, and if you can get past the premise, and believe me, I can understand if you can't. Because it is stupid. It is horribly stupid. But if you can accept that and just sit back and enjoy the senseless violence and watch Frank Grillo act his ass off, it's, it, it's really not that bad. Much better than the first movie. You can skip that one. You're not missing anything. But this one, yeah, give it a rental when it comes out. And that's about it. Uh, one more thing I do want to say before I sign off real quick. On a completely unrelated note... If you have not already picked up Weird Al Yankovic's Mandatory Fun, do so. Use it. Look, look at the name of the album. Mandatory. It is required. You must pick it up. Pick it up now. Maybe not right now, because I'm uploading this in the middle of the night. But, you know, the, the next day, when you got time, pick it up, please. Because it is very good. It's probably one of his best albums, honestly. And also, from what I hear, the last studio album he's going to do... He's still going to make music from here on out, but this is the last album on his current deal. And from here on out, he said he's just going to make singles. Rather than wait until he has a full album's worth of material to release, he's just going to, you know, when the inspiration strikes, he's just going to record a song and put it out there as a single. Which is an interesting strategy, and we'll see how that works out for him. For, for someone who does topical parody songs, that's probably the way to go. I, I guess time will tell. But seriously, pick up Mandatory Fun. It's awesome. Take care. <laughs> this is the last purge of the evening. The bidding will start at 200,000. Just remember all the good the purge does.